This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history, and today he's going to be breaking down the guns of Escape from Tarkov, just to see how accurately the game's arsenal is portrayed. Spoiler alert, he's pretty impressed. So we've got the, the, the Makarov. The sound effects are probably the best I've heard. Let us know if there are any other games, guns or mechanics you want Jonathan to break down in the comments section down below. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And if you want to support Jonathan's work and the Royal Armouries Museum, check out the links in the description of this video. All right, here's Jonathan's take on Escape from Tarkov. Pause. Wow. Um, this is the first I'm seeing of Tarkov. I've heard a lot of people talk about it, seen a lot written about it, that it has a lot of uh, realism in its depiction of firearm. And just from that short clip, right away, I can see what they're talking about. So we've got the, the, the Makarov or Makarov, very much a Cold War pistol, very much a sidearm. It's not, not really a combat weapon, although people with the training can obviously use it that way. And it's really nicely modeled. The sound effects are probably the best I've heard just from that short clip. But that, that sounds like a gun being fired in a building, perhaps. Um, I don't know how much it changes as you move in and out of spaces. Perhaps we'll see. Um, the way it's handled is really cool. The brass check, the press check that he does to make sure that it's chambered around. Bit of a modern thing, but um, it is done and it is in there and you get to see the cartridge in the in the gun. The only thing that threw me off initially was the, the wacky drum magazine, which I am not familiar with as being a real thing and I can't imagine why it would be a real thing. As far as I know, there isn't a drum mag for a Makarov. Perhaps someone can prove me wrong. But I really like what I'm seeing so far. Pausing. Okay, I'm even more impressed now. The one thing that I thought was a bit wacky with the drum magazine, the logic or the lack of logic there would be that it makes it very heavy and uncontrollable. The physics of all that would, would mean that the muzzle would wobble about as you're trying to shoot it. And that's exactly what we see happen, which, I, which I'm really impressed by. That's a really nice mixture of unreality in using a drum magazine with a pistol, which is uncommon, and absolute attention to detail in making the weapon change how it's being fired. I've not really seen that done in that way before. Uh, the other thing I, I really like is the depiction of muzzle flashes. Depending on where you are in the environment and whether the gases that, that have been produced on firing happen to reignite or not, which is the main cause of muzzle flash, this, this is a realistic depiction. So a, a lot of shots you see fired are nothing but smoke. Uh, and then on, on some shots, in some light conditions, you get more of a classic muzzle flash. So there's an awful lot of attention to detail here. Pausing. So the gun we're looking at here is, of course, the, the P90. Really nicely done again. I'm often obsessing about rates of fire when I'm when I'm looking at stuff like this, and that looks to be spot on. Sounds great, looks great. Um, we've got, I think, the, the base model of P90, as I have behind me somewhere, with the ring sights optic on it from the early 90s. And this has got side rails fitted to it, allowing the accessories that we see, including the the green visible laser. Um, so this, this being a thoroughly Russian game, it's not at all surprising that a lot of what we see is um, our firearms of, of Russian or old Soviet origin. And the, the AS Val makes a lot of sense in this game. It's all quiet all the time, effectively. And to aid that, it's firing uh, a very interesting cartridge it's subsonic, so it won't make that crack as it leaves the muzzle. Inevitably, you know, everything's a trade-off. So just like as with the American equivalent, 300 Whisper or 300 Blackout, you get reduced penetration. And the beauty of this game is that you can swap out different ammunition types, which will allow you to tweak that compromise between effectively stopping power and quietness. But given that you are skulking around in a sort of uh, post-industrial landscape, trying not to die, a very quiet weapon that is automatic and relatively speaking has good penetration is, is going to be sought after. And I suspect it will be in the game as well.
<laughs> so we've, we've just seen our unfortunate uh, player there run out of ammunition. That quiet click must be the loudest click in the world in real life when that when that happens. What happens amusingly is the two actually interact uh, in in sort of virtual space. Usually with the game, your the, the the emitter of your bullets would just clip through, or your bullets would be stopped by the by the model in front of you. But it wouldn't be a realistic interaction. But interestingly, what we see there is that the, the shotgun that the guy's trying to kill him with gets pushed against his body and can't effectively finish him off at least he might hit him but he can't can't be finished off and he's able to then pull out an entrenching tool beat the guy <laughs> so something new that i've not seen in a, in a video game before in terms of how people and weapons interact in the physical space both the firearms and, and the guns are firing where they're pointed they don't magically snap to the aiming point and put a bullet out in the same direction they always would they fire where they're pointed which is which shows how well everything is modeled Pausing. That's a really nice AK. It's it's the AK-101, part of the 100 series Kalashnikov. Very, very well depicted, I think. Good rate of fire, good model, good textures, all the right features are on there. Well modeled in semi-automatic mode. It's climbing too much in automatic. Just slightly frustrated to see that because that muzzle break that's on the end of this series of rifles is tremendously effective. Now, if, you, if you're loosely holding it, yeah, it probably will still climb vertically, but a trained person, or even the likes of me, uh, can hold a weapon like that on target, on automatic, and it will pretty much just sit there. The downside is that the guys to the left and right of you get deafened if they're not wearing um, hearing protection because the blast is going out sideways and to the rear to pull the gun forward against recoil. Pausing. Well, there's your problem. Uh, <laughs> it was going so well uh, until we saw the stock being folded up. Now, I, firstly, I should say, brilliant to see the stock actually getting folded up. So to have it modeled at all is really impressive. Uh, whereas with this magazine on, it's not really a problem. We take that off and we fit the RPK drum magazine that we've just seen fitted in the game. You've seen the problem already. The folding stock just clips through the drum magazine. So I'm sure this this being a game that's not uh, that's still in progress, I'm sure they're gonna address that because it's it's a fairly, it sticks out a bit like a sore thumb when you see it happen. Okay, you're gonna pause there. I keep talking about gameplay rather than guns, but uh, I'm just very impressed with with, with, with all of it really, but um, like most first person shooters, it doesn't really matter what you shoot someone with unless unless it's modeling like a 50 BMG or something and there's some graphic effect on the target and they ragdoll 50 feet away or something like that. Normally the sort of the injury or animation, uh, death animation is fairly consistent and it's sometimes a bit underwhelming. This game seems to, you know, it knows <laughs> what weapon you're shooting, what ammunition is loaded in it and what effect that's having on the enemy. Something like this SV-98, powerful cartridge, 7.62 by 54 again, the Russian sort of long range cartridge effectively now. Um, and that has a lot of punch. So that's why we see what we see when the kind of guy goes tumbling out the tower and people just drop like a stone when they're shot in the head with this thing. Pausing there. The TOZ bolt action shotgun that we see here is definitively a, a civilian weapon. Bolt action shotguns are not particularly common. They have the, the downside of being slow to, to operate. There's usually a better way to do it, be it pump action, lever action even, um, or a self-loading design. It's, it's an interesting one. It, it's, it makes sense in this context um, and looks appropriately sort of apocalyptic. So I can see why it's in the game. I'm not sure how popular it is in the game. Uh, a tw 20 gauge shotgun is not as good as a 12 gauge shotgun, broadly speaking. Pausing. We've got another uniquely Russian weapon in this uniquely Russian game, the KS-23. And it's, it's, a, it's this unusual 23 millimeter cartridge type with quite a range of different ammunition. Uh, and we see two different 
types here. We've got that, that ear ringing um, flashbang round. That's, that's very interesting in terms of gameplay. Normally you'd have to throw a, a grenade to have that effect. The other cartridge we see used here, I gather is effectively a buckshot type conventional shotgun round. Unusually for a video game, it's, it's used at quite some distance. I don't know what real world distance that equated to that we saw there, but the ability to shoot someone at that distance is very unusual in a game. Going right, going right back to Doom 2 with the super shotgun. Shotguns are this bizarre, devastating effect out to about five meters or something. And then just suddenly, the, it's like the Neo, it's like Neo in the Matrix just stops the pellets in midair and they drop to the ground or have, have no real effect. Real life's not like that. Buckshot at sort of beyond 25-ish meters is perhaps questionable in terms of will you hit them and will the pattern cause enough damage to, to drop an enemy soldier, especially if they're wearing armor. Nonetheless, you can hit a man-sized target at that distance and probably at the distance that we saw there. And even if you hit them with two or three of the pellets, they're probably going to be seriously reconsidering their options at that point. Pausing. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize they'd modeled Nerf guns in uh, Tarkov as well as real ones. Because uh, <laughs> for, for an M4, this is not very effective. So what what's actually happened in that clip there is the guy is shrugging off shots, and it's not necessarily reflecting the um, capability of the of the weapon or the ammunition. As in the real world, it it depends where you're hit very much. Um, how how much adrenaline is in the system? How motivated you are? Perhaps people are on drugs even. All of which affects how you respond to a gunshot wound. On the face of it, seeing this guy get hit multiple times, I'd expect him to respond uh, <laughs> visibly to being hit in some way, and he doesn't. So I'm not sure about that. But the fact that he can carry on fighting until the last shot hits something critical is absolutely realistic. The, the rifle itself looks to be well modeled. Um, our, our player here has really tricked it out. Um, now this is not uncommon to see. People like the, the AR-15 platform for the ability to accessorize. <laughs> Depending on their level of training, they will often pile accessories onto these guns to the point where they become cumbersome and a little bit ridiculous. And this being a, a realistic game, I suspect the handling characteristics do suffer when you've got every accessory under the sun attached to your rifle. Uh, right, the MP5. I'd be disappointed if there wasn't an MP5 in this game. Classic gun, one of my favourites. This sort of check animation that you see there, where the magazine's taken out and you can see the round in the top of the mag. Very minor detail, but it looks like it's modelled as a single column, or rather a, a single feed at the top. And actually, if you look into a loaded MP5 magazine, you can see the round next to it, because they sit side by side. Um, partly what makes it a very good magazine. Incredibly minor detail, considering that not many years ago, we've got first person shooters where there are no bullets visible in the magazine. This is well modeled, um, but I think the very next level of, of precision might be to, to more accurately depict the rounds in the magazine. I'm gonna pause. Okay, I, I feel like I'm being trolled here because the MP5 has suddenly, been customized to death as well. It's got everything under the sun on it. We've got an EOTech site, we've got a, an EOTech magnifier, we've got a laser light module, some sort of foregrip, modular forend to take all of that. And I think I saw a drum magazine as well, possibly a different stock. So just illustrating the lengths that one can go to. But um, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this has been a breakdown of the weapons and the ammunition of Escape from Tarkov, and I am thoroughly impressed. Um, so I hope to see you again in a future video. If you would like to, um, we have got a link to donate to the Royal Armouries. Uh, it's difficult times at the moment for museums. It will help us continue to make videos with our friends at GameSpot. No pressure at all, but if you feel that you can, or would like to, please do donate.